All right. So our next speaker, uh, another colleague of mine, uh, Edison, will be talking about one of the boxes that uh, Lay showed you guys. Do you remember how he was showing you what's happening with the uh, SQL when it comes you know, into block? And one of the boxes right after the parser was you know, the optimizer. So uh, Edison will be talking about latest addition to the open source from Pivotal. So Pivotal has just open sourced a project called Orca, which is essentially a universal optimizer for big data. And we hope it will be useful way outside of the projects that we're currently using it for. So with that, they do it. Just took one of my slides. That was, that was wonderful. Well, good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Um, just so I get a sense of the room, um, if I said TPCDS, who's like, duh. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Um, if I said explain, analyze. Yeah? Okay, better. Cool. So, um, we're going to talk about query optimization. This is the kind of stuff that I look at all day, uh, but we might get back to this. Um, so, Orca. Um, we kind of talked about this, the title for this talk, and, and we called it query optimization for, as a service. Um, don't think about like SAS or anything like that, but it it's a very unique approach to query optimization um, that we think has broader implication in what it's being used today. So I got 20 minutes. I'm going to talk a little bit about like what is query optimization, and why you should care about it. I'm going to introduce Orca. I'm going to go into the internals. We're going to go through the process of pairing together, and we're actually going to add a transformation inside of Orca together. Um, and then I'm going to talk about where uh, things are going. So why do we want to even care about query optimization? Like why, or why do you want to listen to me for like the next 20 minutes? Um, so query optimization, it's really simple. It takes a, a expression of a query, that can be a SQL query, a, a map reduced context, whatever, uh, and it turns it into an execution plan. How should uh, the data go get, you know, an answer get computed? But the problem is, the way that how fast the data is growing is not is, is way bigger than our ability to process it. So we need to use what we have today to process data as efficiently as possible. That's where query optimization comes in. And historically, every database is shipped with its own optimizer. You know, if you think about IBM. They have like 16 optimizers, which is a lot of overhead to maintain. And it's actually one of the things that inside a database, just there's a lot of debt inside of them. And they're very complex and they're hard to maintain. So this is where Orca comes in. These are some buzzwords, uh, but I want to go through them. Uh, so Orca is a modular approach to query optimization. Um, when we were thinking about uh, its architecture, we wanted to make it fairly simple. So if you think about the cyclomatic complexity of a program, the existing Postgres planner versus Orca. Orca is six to 10 times uh, lower on that scale, making it much easier to maintain and add to. It's also extensible. So the way that we, if you want to add something to it, uh, you can add in a transformation or an operator for another database fairly easily. And it's pluggable, and this is the most interesting part, that it lives outside of the core of the database, and it can be used for multiple databases. So it's used today in more than one, and we think that it can be used in a lot of different databases. And what's interesting about this, it makes it a perfect R&D testbed for query optimization. So if you think you can add something to this field, Orca is a great place to turn to to uh, try your ideas out. But it's more than just an R&D test, but it's actually used in two production grade databases that's handling big, big customer workloads. So it's great for R&D, but it's also enterprise grade. So in terms of speed, what we've achieved um, across the entire uh, TPCDS query benchmarking suite, all 99, it's five times faster than if we're not using Orca, where it actually falls back to the legacy planner. Um, these down here, these regressions, I'll talk about those later. And as of Friday, uh, it's open source. So six years of R&D, 
given it to the world because we think the way that we can make this better is with the community. So we're really excited about it. So what makes it so unique? Uh, when I think of Orc actually doing its job, I think this is what it looks like. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Um, so some key features. We do really smart uh, partition elimination, making sure that we're not grabbing data from where we don't need to. Um, we unnest subqueries. We do um, common table expression and try to reverse the query trees where necessary. Uh, we look at join, or join ordering, how we're actually bringing the joins together, sorting, uh, and it's, we're really aware of skew. So we do a lot of cardinality estimation to understand the underlying data. So before I go any further, uh, the difference between a logical operator and a physical operator in a database. This is really important to understanding how Orca works. So a logical operator is something like join. So this is just the, the uh, logical way of thinking what needs to happen to the data for it to compute. The physical operator is the algorithm that's actually going to make that operation happen in the database. So join is a logical operator. Uh, hash join is the algorithm that's going to implement that. So a lot of databases, what they'll do is they'll go through a couple steps where they'll do pre-processing of the logical representation of the query plan. Then they'll just take one logical query plan and they'll turn it into its physical implementation. So they'll do a couple transformations, pick one, and then do the physical operations, and then it'll be <coughs> best cost out of out of that grouping. Orca does something different. We do do pre-processing, processing where we're doing logical to logical logical uh, transformation. An example of that is a predicate pushdown. So we have something like a where clause. We're going to put that at the bottom of the tree, so that we're not picking all the data, you know, and bringing it up through the tree. We want to just select what we need at the very bottom something pretty simple that every single database should do. But what we do a little differently is we do pre-processing, we do a whole bunch of logical transformations, and then out of every single one of the logical transformation plans, we actually implement its physical uh, plan. And then we compute cost within all of those. So. If we look at just TPCDS query one, we compute one billion ways of actually achieving that in the database. And depending on your cluster and um, the metadata surrounding that, uh, we'll choose the right plan for that cost. So a couple of the logical transformations that I talked about, uh, there's a join or ordering algorithm. There we expand n array join min and max cardinality algorithms. A whole host. And I'm, this was just, there were 77 more that I could count on the plane, but there was a lot of turbulence and, and I was just counting them like this. But there's a lot. And you can add them. And the reason that there's a lot is that it's modular. You know, if you have an idea of like, oh, I think we could actually compute this, this one tree in a different way. And when we were developing these, that's what we did. It was just, oh, there's an idea, and we added one. And then Orca, the way that it's architected, just does the rest for us. So it uses something called DXL to communicate with the database. So if above on the screen was the core of the database, oh, these slides are available online. You don't have to take pictures. I'll send you to You won't be on the picture. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. I, it won't be me pointing. All right. So uh, the database is up there. It communicates over something called DXL. Uh, we get a DXL representation of the query. Um, we allocate some memory to do our calculations. We look at the operators necessary. We do the transformations. We have uh, libraries in there for cardinality estimation, our cost model. Etc. So, and then we once we have a good plan, we just send it back to the database, and it executes. So it communicates over this DXL layer. So, something about Pivotal. Um, by the way, I'm Addison. I work at Pivotal. Um, 
we pair on like everything. Um, so we're, we're big into pair programming. So what I want to do now is I want to add a transformation together uh, because I have an idea. So I have an idea, and that's to split an aggregate into a, uh, a pair of, of a local or a global aggregate. So this is an MPP-specific uh, operation. Uh, there are four of these inside Orca, but you've heard a lot about MPP databases. So the question that I have is, I don't know if it's better to calculate, uh, do our, our, if we have a scalar variable, like count. I don't know if we should do the count on one of the segments and then send that tuple to the, the uh, master, or if we should send all the data to the master, do the count, and then get the answer. I don't know which one's more efficient. No idea. So I want to develop a transformation that Orca will calculate to figure out if we should actually, uh, which one we should do. And then we'll send the plan that says when to actually gather all those tuples and redistribute motion back up to the master. So an example of this is we're going to select the sum of column C from table foo, and we group by column B, and that's the table. And it's all distributed by A. With me? Cool? All right. <laughs> Next step. All right, we're going to create two files. This is where uh, the source files are and the header files are. So you know. So when you look later and you're going to add a transformation, this is what you do. All right, so it follows a pretty basic pattern. Um, when adding these transformations. So our transformation is going to be called um, CX form split global ag. Uh, does anyone, does anyone see anything funny about this? The first time I started working on Orcas, I was like, what does that mean? This is uses Hungarian notation. Love or hate it. I hated it first, and now I love it. Um, so, uh, so GPOS is something that Orca uses. It's an abstraction layer on top of the operating system. You can use this for a bunch of different things. We also open sourced it. So if I call GPS new, GPOS new and pass it to a pointer to a memory pool, I'm going to get back a, uh, a scratch pad, if you will, to do all my, my billion plus transformations. So that's GPOS new. So the C expression, I'm going to give it three things. I'm going to give it a logical aggregate operator, and that is the context, or the, the global ag operator. That's the first thing I want to pass into it. The next thing is I need a relational child and a scalar variable. So that matches to the transformation. Remember, in that select, we had a uh, aggregate. We're doing an aggregate. So we count things. Actually, sum it. We have a leaf relational child, which is the data. We're going to have to scan for some data. And then we're going to have a scalar variable, count. So if we, if, if Orca will see those three things in the actual query tree, it's going to trigger this transformation and say, OK, do it this way. What? What does that mean? If you look really close, this didn't turn out too great. Uh, Basically, in the query tree, there's those three things. So, Orca has a built-in function that will check if we can actually do this transformation. So, are all the conditions met, the three that I just laid out? And if we call this virtual function, it will actually go ahead and calculate. And then we simply write a transformation. Easy, right? Um, so. We pass Orca into this function, this transform function. We give it the context, so that's the overall um, transformation that we're running. Uh, we need to send the result of the transformation back to Orca, uh, back to the larger calculation, because we're just doing one piece of the actual transformation of the entire tree. And that expression that we had earlier, where we needed a scalar variable, uh, child leaf, and that global act. And then we just register it with the factory. So there's a file in there that you just add that memory pool 
and or you, you give it some memory, and then we registered our CX form split global ag operator. And then Oracle will go through and fire it, see if it actually is able to fire it, and then actually. <coughs> so what can it do? It can't do a lot. We're working on it. So building a query optimizer, it turns out, it's a lot like life. It's about finding balance. So uh, right now, it, it, it does a really good job at these long-running uh, TPCDS queries, big analytical queries. But we're right now, we're trying to figure out how to improve it for short-running queries, and we're doing a pretty good job at it. Um, it's not yet feature complete. There's a lot of things that it doesn't support yet. Uh, external, external parameters, uh, ordered aggregates, index expressions, these are all things that the legacy Postgres planner uh, supports. So our ultimate goal for this project is to one day replace, uh, have the Postgres community uh, adopt Orca as the de facto query optimizer. Uh, it's a long way away, but we think we can get there because the, uh, the number of people that actually know that code base is shrinking, and we think this has the potential to uh, have a much longer life. More pieces of low-hanging fruit that if you want to start working on this, uh, you can work on. There's no actual distinct, uh, we can't distinguish today between physical and logical operators. They're created, they're, the database knows about them, but it's not very readable. Um, move expression evaluation uh, inside Orca, currently the parser handles that, and there's a couple more. So if you want to get involved, um, we kind of live in the Greenpoint project, but we're used in a lot of other databases. We just, you know, the community isn't that big yet, so we're riding our coattails. Uh, talk about it on the dev mailing list. We have a public pivotal tracker that we use to track uh, all of our work. So you can get in there, comment, uh, see what we're working on. It's a white paper if you want even more details. And you can tweet at me and bother me um, and talk about how this presentation was. And those are the slides. So that's the one picture you can take. So you go on there, you can get the slides. And we've got time for like a couple questions. Thank you. Questions? Okay. So it's not going to be a difficult one. Okay. Um, so there's an interface to the database, PXL, if I recall it correctly, PXL, yeah. to uh, get the query and uh, return the query plan. Now, how do you get the statistics information? There's also an interface to the database to gather the statistics from the data? There is. There is. Okay. Um, so we pull down the metadata from the database, and that's, that all goes through that PXL translation. How does it handle a uh, changing nature of the database? Like, for example, the table now has a thousand rows. In a week, it has ten billion rows. Uh, has it kept? Uh, has it cast any of the uh, results? Yeah, the, the metadata we were talking about. The um, you just rerun analyze, uh, and you can get a better sense of the database. <coughs> Um, but are you talking about the actual cluster information? Like if you grew the cluster, or you just added more data? Um, more data. Generally, changing the, the, the size and form of the database, how does it affect uh, Orca? So we try to gather stats as often as possible. And through, through those stats, we have that, that's what goes into the cost modeling. So, for example, a lot of times if we're not getting the, the typical plan that we would see, then we need to uh, update our statistics, and that often shows us that we're getting the plan that we need. Because this is, a, this is an NP complete problem where you need one, uh, a guarantee on one side to solve the other, and if we don't have really good stats, then we can't find the best plan. Okay, there was a question there. Ah, so you get the statistics through the, the actual queries. Mm -hmm. uh, how often does it happen, and how do you trigger it? So uh, DBA will do that. Okay. Um, we don't actually. Uh, it's not something that we run, but we, you know, it's something that is a, a good DBA will, will run um, so often. They'll they'll know a little bit about their cluster and say, well, we just added a, another million tuples, and. Uh, we should probably update our stats. It'd be cool if it was automatic, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? All right. Well, thank you.
Thank you, Gary.